Zika. Um, in fact, it's, it's a forest in Uganda, and that's where the virus got the name. I will say that in, me, in many instances, it's also a disease. And the way I look at this is, uh, you can get an infection by this virus, and, and that will be just an infection. Once you get the symptoms, that's when you call it a disease. This virus is transmitted by, by mosquitoes. If, if they bite someone who is infected with the virus and then go and bite someone else, uh, that's when you usually get the infection. So that's the mode of transmission, the predominant mode of transmission of this virus. Yes, uh, there are symptoms, so you can get um, body aches, you can get fever, you can get a rash. In most cases, um, besides these symptoms that could include headache, body ache, most people won't get any symptoms at all. So you can get the infection and not even know about it. You may uh, uh, get the infection after a mosquito bite or after a sexual contact and not have any symptoms at all. So that's uh, the concept that we use here is that this virus likes to go to the nervous, central nervous system, to the brain, and the, the, the word to describe that technically is a neurotropic virus, so a virus that likes to go to the nervous system, particularly for babies, it can go to their brains, and there they can cause damage. And that has been translated in, in changing the development and the appearance of the baby when, it's been, when, when the baby is, 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 is growing, or the fetus, if you want to use the, the technical name for for a growing baby, right? Um, so um, when the fetus is being developed, if they get an infection, that can affect their normal growth pattern and can have long-term consequences for, for babies in, term of, in terms of their cognitive or intellectual development. If you are planning to travel to a place that is endemic, uh, there are some general recommendations that can help you. Um, some of the basic ones will be uh, to use a, a, an appropriate mosquito repellent. And uh, one of those is the, those containing DEET, but there are others, and you can look that in the CDC website too. I will say that knowing about it is the best way uh, to protect yourself. So I think that hopefully listening to this uh, video can help uh, people understand and know that what they can do and in what situation they should be more concerned about being protected. And we already highlighted what, which is the more vulnerable population to get this illness. Of course, avoiding mosquito bites is, is one way, but this is important, uh, particularly if you are in an endemic location. That means a location where the virus is being circulating. I'm not aware at this point in this location uh, that in this location we have the virus necessarily as an, as uh, as endemic in the sense of continuously uh, generating new infection locally, right? Uh, do we have the potential for that to happen? And uh, yes, we do have the potential for that to happen because we have the right type of mosquitoes here. Um, but uh, uh, right now, the, the major concern is for people who are traveling, especially if they are thinking about getting pregnant.